We should denounce voter fraud wherever we see it. If we know of voter fraud, if we see it happen, if we see uh, some citizens attempting to vote twice, there's a penalty for anybody attempting to uh, hack the system or to uh, register twice or vote twice. A penalty, $5,000. That's why voter fraud is rare. That's why you, well, you rarely read of instances of voter fraud. And, and let me just say, in 2000 in Missouri, the Secretary of State claimed that 79 voters were registered with addresses at vacant lots. Uh, but there was an investigation later, and they found out that there were people who actually lived in those uh, houses. The problem we have in, in America today is that our voter registration lists are incomplete. They're inaccurate, and they haven't been cleaned in such a long time. Who knows who's on those? I'm sure Bruce Springsteen, Mary Poppins, Santa Claus, and everybody else. Until we get serious about how we conduct elections in this country, we will continue to have problems. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Yegi, you, you asked the question about how many people have voted in person illegally that ID would have prevented. Uh, Detroit Free Press did a study in Michigan in, in last December. They found more than 120 people cast ballots in the name of dead people. Now, you might say 120 fraudulent votes that could have been prevented by ID aren't enough. But tell that to the citizens of Washington State, where they decided their governor's race by about that margin. You find very close, as we saw in Florida, thin margins, as Chairman Reynolds is noting, thin margins in elections are deciding not only who's our president, who's our governor, who's our senator being decided. So 120 votes, as were found by the, and, and that was in a limited sample in, in Michigan. Now, by definition, a ballot cast at a polling place in the name of a dead person is a ballot cast fraudulently by somebody who, if they had to present a photo ID, would likely have been prevented from doing it. So it is a kind of reasonable common sense reform to stop documented cases of vote fraud. Don, you mentioned the case in Missouri with the study that we did after the 2000 election. That election by the Democrat Secretary of State at that point, Becky Cook, found that 48 people just appeared at different polling places and cast a ballot illegally without ever being uh, authorized to do so. So it is a documented fact when we look for it that it happens. Now, many states don't have an ID requirement at all, so it can go on very easily. The only thing in St. Louis, Missouri, that would prevent Ritzy the dog from casting a ballot that would void mine or some other voter in Missouri is the fact that somebody coming to the polling place pretending to be Ritzy Meckler, who we found was a cocker spaniel, had to first provide an identification. Donna is, I think, very right. Not all of these <clears throat> allegations ultimately pan out, and I think we have to be discriminating. However, remember we're dealing both in the case of voter intimidation and in the case of voter fraud with illegal behavior. So just to point to the number of prosecutions, just to point to the number of people who caught at it, since it's illegal behavior, not, you're not going to catch the entire problem. To say that it's rare is the same thing as to say that we don't, we don't know the full extent of the drug problem in this country because it's illegal. You're not going to know all of it because people are not going to volunteer information about it. It's in the shadows. I mean, I've actually seen well, academics. I mean, I really have to. I really have to. I really, I'm sorry. I really have to. I've actually, yeah. I've actually yeah. seen yeah. academic studies. I mean, to compare, compare which, voting to the drug problem is just, I mean, it's just a stretch. It's, 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 it's illegal behavior, and it's in the shadows. To repeat, I have seen academic studies that have actually purported to show that the level of voter fraud in this country is very small simply by going out and interviewing people in the election process. I'm sorry. You're, you're going to have people who commit these activities, whether they're intimidation or whether they're fraud, who are not going to admit it. And in addition, the election officials are not exactly going to demonstrate or talk about the frailties in their system because that reflects poorly on their own be behavior and their own performance. Is how much fraud is there out there? My answer to that question is we don't know. We don't know. I mean, we could know if we really cared by doing something very simple that most countries do, which is they have a poll book at each election site, and they register every irregularity that occurs during the course of the day. For example, one time I went to vote, and I found that somebody had already voted under my name. Um, I had no recourse at that point uh, to find out why this had occurred, whether there was some error or, or whatever else. And the polling station itself didn't keep any record of it. So we wouldn't know whether there's a, a whether, whether, whether it's a large number, whether it's no number, or whatever. My, my personal view is that we're likely to see a small number if it occurs. Um, we don't know how much, but even a small number is important because if there's a close election, it makes a big difference. And, and, well, I would just submit that I think resources are spent 
on tracking down voter intimidation. If you go over to the Justice Department, the Civil Rights Division, you will find dozens and dozens of lawyers there, up close to 200, and their responsibility is to make sure that the Voting Rights Act is enforced and to make sure that prosecutors go out and investigate claims. A task force was sent down to Florida after 2000 by Attorney General Janet Reno. Uh, there are a lot of people there, but if you want to find an attorney there whose sole job is to investigate allegations of voter fraud at the federal level, you'll find one human being, one person. So I would submit to you, we need resources spent on both, but I think, if anything, there's an imbalance now. There's no imbalance. There's no imbalance. On Election Day, both in 2000 and 2004, uh, there was direct contact to the Justice Department on instances of, of voter intimidation and voter suppression. Uh, I can recall there were calls, and this was under the Clinton administration, there were calls directly to the Justice Department reporting unauthorized personnel uh, blocking access to polling places in some, uh, uh, some areas in Leon County in, in Florida. Uh, Senator Barack Obama has introduced S-1975, which is called the Deceptive Practices and Voter Intimidation Prevention Act, of 2005, which would make it a crime punishable up to one year in prison and a fine up to $100,000 for knowingly deceiving a person regarding the time, place, or manner of election in any federal election or qualifications for restrictions on voter eligibility for any federal election with the intent to prevent such person from exercising the right to vote. So the, the truth is, is that unfortunately these schemes happen. I, I can tell you as somebody who's managed and run campaigns all my life, all my life, uh, I have seen some of the craziest things happen on Election Day, but I have, known, I have told my staff, if anybody, any volunteer, any paid worker, unpaid worker is ever caught suggesting that uh, any American should vote on another day other than that Election Day, they would be fired instantly and, and be turned into the proper authority. So this happens, unfortunately, in our country. I've seen it up close and personal, and we should outlaw it, and we should make it a national crime for people to knowingly stop and prohibit people from voting. I deplore that as well, but let me just make one point about the 2000 Florida election. Yes, there were reports of police cars, in one instance, setting up a roadblock to try to catch someone, and that was close to a polling place. There were reports of other people being blocked from voting. There were reports made to the Justice Department, I agree. But there were 10 weeks in which Attorney General Janet Reno and the Clinton administration investigated those allegations. Please bring me the report. Please bring me the report which found any substantial substance to those allegations. Bring me the Justice Department report. It does not exist. The, the, I would, this own commission investigated and went into Florida back in 2000, right following that election and heard directly the from Department some of those, of those individuals. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Kirsten now. Thank you. Um, the Civil Rights Commission did go down to Florida uh, after the 2000 election, after there were uh, scores of reports about voter intimidation and fraud, and the commission heard considerable testimony and was able to glean two instances in which sure, sure, sure. there may have been some blockage of voting. One was a empty state trooper car that was across the street from a polling place. That was the extent of it. The other one was a traffic checkpoint two miles away and not even on the same road. Uh, as another polling place, which checkpoint actually stopped. Uh, the, the, the allegation was that there were a certain number of people who were stopped. The people who were stopped were people with broken <coughs> tail lights and the usual checkpoints. So the commission did go down there, and despite all of the, the allegations, that's the extent of what we were able to find, and the Justice Department didn't, wasn't able to find anything else. That's not to say there wasn't anything, but we have to look at the empirical evidence. But my concern goes more to uh, Mr. Fund raised the issue of absentee ballots, and we've been concerned about a photo ID and you know, what kind of um, uh, safeguard does photo ID present if we have absentee ballots and there's proliferation of that. Um, the Miami election of 1998, the mayoral election, was set aside because of uh, irregularities with respect to absentee ballots. Um, and just as an aside, in Florida, again, Race decided for president by 579 votes, and the Miami Herald was able to discern 2,000 people voting illegally. That changes the election, or could have the potential of changing the election. With respect to absentee ballots, uh, does Mexico have biometrics that they attach to 
uh, their, their ballots or, or the registration lists? And if so, it, has there been any consideration given or assessment done either by the Baker, uh, Carter Baker Commission or elsewhere as to what the cost of any kind of biometric protection, either at the polling place or by absentee ballot, uh, it seems to me that that would also encourage, uh, Ms. Brazil, you were talking about multiple forms of identification having to be produced. Sometimes poll workers aren't aware of the fact that provisional ballots may obviate that need. But if you've got one uniform standard that is immutable, uh, that no one can effectively even challenge you, that that might be a means by which you can ensure both integrity and also access. But I'm concerned about has there been a cost assessment associated with that? First, on regard to Mexico, and, and Mr. Yaki is absolutely right. Mexico, uh, I started observing Mexican elections in 1986 and learned everything I needed to know about electoral fraud. <laughs> <laughs> the, Mexi the Mexicans had perfected dozens. In fact, they have more words for electoral fraud than Eskimos have for snow. Um, uh, because of that, however, they leaped over a 20-year period to a system that is significantly more advanced than ours, uh, frankly, right now. They do have biometric identification cards, uh, which were introduced and in which 99% of the voting population have them. Um, they have, as I said, not only biometric uh, voter cards, which they actually use for everything now because they're, they're so fraud-proof, um, but they also have photos in the registration uh, list of each of the people, too.